Definitely something nice about um, having a busy day and then just being able to come sit in front of the uh, computer, <laughs> do some painting. Not really have to think too much about it. Neop, thank you for the follow. I really appreciate it. Um, just painting. Uh, they're quite new, actually. They're called uh, Squeak Hog Riders. Um, just doing base coats, which will pretty much be, I think, most of tonight, because there's a lot to go. But um, yeah, I appreciate the the follow. We are trying to get to 50, see if we can hit that first milestone there with the giveaway at the 50 followers mark, I suppose. Ah, thank you. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's getting there. Definitely, um, it's definitely gonna look good once we get to sort of like this level. And this is the uh, the model we'll be giving away. Um, but as you can kind of see, there's a few few sitting up here. Um, so it's going to take a little longer than painting just one, which is why we've we're already in a, like a third stream for our doing base coats basically. Um, but yeah, it's fun, something to do after work. How was um how's your day? A busy day or a bit chill? You working, studying? That's good. Always good if your Mondays can be good. Hopefully that uh, continues on for the rest of the week. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, like as I said, a lot of this is just um, base coding, but um, it'll it'll get there. Um. I think this guy is probably the most along and we've got at least like a second layer on the skin there for the squig 
um, thinking about putting in um, a different color um, on the underside and I'm thinking like not not like this kind of blue but um, I don't know maybe something along the lines of like this Uh, to give it some contrast, give it some variety. It's pretty much what makes miniature painting um, pop pop out and like stand out is uh, cut the contrasts. As long as you have good contrast, usually the model f sort of fills itself out. Obviously, there's time and practice as well, but um, a good contrast color can definitely sort of um, enhance your your miniatures. So I want yellow. I've got like this. There's like a little like uh, what's his name, Yondu um, head thing. I think one of the others has it too. Yeah, the the main war boss has it too. Uh, so I think maybe I'd do that a different color just to. Man, I don't know what's been happening today. Maybe the coffee, but. I had a, like massive um, reflux today, so it's not been great. But um, yeah, I think I think maybe we'll do those like top bits, uh, maybe like a, a lightning blue, and we'll um, just have them stand out a little bit. So we'll be doing our cloth and pants purple. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Might it might be the coffee. I had a, a lot of coffee today. But surprised that my hands are not more jittery. It seems to have worn off a little bit. And it will definitely just be water for the rest of the night. a little bit on him. Oh, what a... In and out. Yeah. Tell me about it. Well, I've got this, um... Let's not spill that. <laughs> it's not going to fit in frame. Even though it says Coke, it is definitely water. <laughs> I promise you. Forgot we had a second camera. <clears throat> I've got to keep remembering that there's a camera here and <laughs> to get the paint 
paintbrush on there, on screen, so you can kind of see what I'm doing. This guy's really wobbly. I'm like not a fan of how wobbly he is. your process for choosing the color uh well um the the box kind of gave me the color for the this like the mounts of the squigs um which i like i just like that orange color because it's th there are things that are that orange in nature but it's not common um so I kind of like that um and then always done like always done my orcs in yellow armor um not sure why it's just i don't know everyone seems to do like blacks and reds and like um i mean th this will still be dirty like i'll make it like rusted and stuff like that but you know like darker colors and um yeah so just um just having like really bright orc colors i don't know something funny about that to me um but we as i said we'll be doing another color on the underbelly sort of underbelly and then like back of the legs as well um, which will be some shade of blue uh, which I've not done before so that'll be be different but uh, yeah for this that's how that's basically like it's just come down to tradition for these guys whereas let me get the box for this guy this guy basically looks like a Scottish warrior so you've got <laughs> the, the red hair you've got um the um, tartan like on the um, shoulder thing and on the uh, on all the cloth and the skins kind of pale uh, this is the actual colors like the Games Workshop colors. So completely different. Very sort of like more vampire-like, so. Um, yeah, not always following the uh, the box art, but um, you know, sometimes it's there just to give you um, um, a guide if you're not, not sure on, on colors and not familiar with them. Um, not familiar with uh, color, no, not not so much color theory, just basic color co um, combinations. So, just sounds so pretentious to call it color theory. Like it's, it's just knowing the differences between contrasts and um, complementary and things like that. Yes, that is my long-winded answer to how I choose my colors. Sometimes it'll be literally for the meme or out of tradition. Sometimes it just starts with one color and you work off that.
Red Rufy twenty one, thank you for the follow, I appreciate it. How are you today? Hope you're having a good Monday. Assuming it is Monday where you are. Who knows with time zones, like it's too hard to keep up sometimes. Well, it's only Monday here for another uh, four, eight, two, ten, four hours or something. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, was just discussing how I choose the colours, and it's yeah, as I said, for this one, a, a mix of what's on the box and um, tradition. Uh, always paint, always painted the uh, armour on my orcs yellow. From 40k to Blood Bowl, it's always been yellow. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Every day is Monday until it's Friday. Switch brushes, that's way too big. The, um, the only awkward thing about this uh, camera angle is when I start painting things that are like under here all you see is the Games Workshop trademark and the print number for the miniature so I try not to to do that sometimes it can't be helped when you need specific angles to get a uh, get to the model So I apologize if I do it and forget. But um, what are we now? 35? <laughs> Is there only 15 off our 50 goal? So what will happen if you are interested? And I know that I've mentioned that um, we are just shipping this time to Australia, so if you are from overseas, I do apologise. It's just going to be way too expensive to ship for free anything out of the country. Um, and even in the country, sending stuff to, if someone was to win in Perth, probably still going to be really expensive. But... Um, notification once we hit 50 notifications will go up on uh, Twitter and um, Instagram and then we'll have a actual giveaway stream to choose a, a winner at random does Radicard the Beast have a story? Uh, probably um. I put the box down somewhere awkward, probably, but okay. 
<laughs> I had it like moments ago. Does he have a story on the back? Nope, it's just information about him. Uh, you'd have to look it up. Um, unfortunately, it was just like a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be painting on the stream is just stuff that I find cool. Um, this one was actually, so he was actually suggested um, to me at the um, Games Workshop shop in Brisbane. Um, I literally walked in and said I need something cool to paint and we had a few options and yeah this guy uh, so Radicar was the was the best choice I think um, challenging and something different as well um, but yeah in, in terms of story I, I don't really know much of uh, Age of Sigma to be honest um, was more into 40k and then even then I didn't really care too much about the lore more just trying to get games which with adult lives is a lot harder than you think it is so much so that I'm kinda just sticking to Blood Bowl now because it's a little bit quicker once you know the game and Less mon, less money, less models. Easy to set up. So, been um, been having a few games of that instead. And I guess to explain Blood Bowl really quickly, it's if you took NF, NFL, so American football, and put it in the fantasy unit universe. So everything from humans to goblins to orcs to elves in a football game. And it's awesome and crazy and unpredictable. Um, and a lot of fun. I would recommend, especially if you're not too competitive, which is weird to say for a sport game, but it's so random that if you are too competitive, I think you'll just have a bad time, because it's, there's some skill in it, don't get me wrong, but it is definitely down to the dice rolls. And again, you can say that, I guess, with most uh, tabletop games, but it really is down to the dice rolls with uh, with Blood Bowl. So, an interesting game. Now that we've got a bit of yellow on, like, probably not everywhere. Yeah, I was, think I was thinking about background music, and I do apologise that I can't add any. Um, it's, um, they're pretty strict on um, copyright claims. And I, I think there are Twitch, like, approved ones that I should probably look into, so... I will definitely note that for next stream, try and get some Twitch approved um, sound, uh, like music tracks, um, but yeah, and again like, you know, I'm a 30, what, 36 follower, yeah, terms of service, that's right, um, but as I said, I'll look into it, um, so hopefully for next stream we'll have something. Right. See, and, and again, this is all just part of the the learning curve with uh, being a new streamer and everything like that. So, I'll ask around see if I can find some music. But um, yeah, unfortunately, just got my headphones in, 
listening to stuff myself, um, but obviously can't can't play that on stream just yet. Yeah, see, it would be interesting to find out if I can just, like, have the copyright music, yeah, exactly, um, but have the copyright music while the stream's going, and then just delete the VOD, but, I don't know. Both um both are good options. Let me just see if I can find something quickly. And then I will need my headset to actually listen to what we're putting up. But so, excuse my hand here. Close up of hands. Mm. need to sign up for that, that's fine. In the interest of time, I will look into it for next stream, which will be Wednesday. Oh, I can just play it, can I? Okay. I need to sign up. Okay. Epidemicsounds.com All right, give me a sec. So I can actually hear what I'm actually putting out now. Let's see, music, music, music. See if this actually plays. Yeah, um, 
on, let me... God, this is going to be really hard. How's that? So I've dropped the music down quite a bit, and then there's me. Let me drop that down a bit more. The problem is waiting for stream delay. that completely dropped me down as well. if you can't hear me and I'll um it's good okay um and this is just chill rock but um we can change that as well pretty cool. Hopefully, uh, well, we'll see. If we get copyright ban, we get copyright strike. We can get three of them, so that's fine. <laughs> um, again, just keep me notified on how the sound is. Um, and I guess I can take this off. 70s, 80s vibes. Okay. Let's see if we can find something like that. I think these are license pieces in the 70s rock thing, so we'll just see if we can find something a little more lively. <coughs> Chill vibes. Well, yeah, that's what um, that's what I had chosen. Now I've lost it. No! Get some purple on the, on the parts that we uh, we need purple, and then that'll give because there's like still a few bits and pieces that um, are sort of what's the word getting in the way of trying to decide on what colors need to be what. I definitely know that like our pants are going to be purple, so we've got a bit of a Hulk situation going on with that. So we can at least do that. Because then we'll come back and add in the metal base and the um, uh, yellow base as well.
But I do, towards the end of the night, I do want to um, make sure that I've got a at least an understanding of what glue I'm going to use for the underbelly because um, I definitely want, want that. Because there's a, there's, a, there's a frog in, in nature, most people have probably seen pictures of it and I don't know what its name is. Um, and I think it's blue on top and orange on bottom. So it'd be like the reverse of that. And if a squig isn't an angry, jacked up frog then I don't know really what else it is. <laughs> I mean, maybe not these guys, but if you've seen like the traditional squeaks, which are a bit more like this guy. I mean, like, they're basically like frog guys. said got a bit of the um, Hulk situation going on with the uh, the old 70s purple pants um, so yeah just something fun and just more interesting than brown because most of the time it's brown like pants brown skin green armor black or red and I don't know just gets old plus eventually someone will like the plan is basically Everything that gets painted is going to get given away. So eventually someone will have these. And they'll have to explain why they have goblins and orcs with pebble pants. <laughs> the 50 follower tip and we can get we can send off um, old mate Radikar and we can go from there and work out how we're gonna do the next lot of giveaways the little top bit purple instead of blue and then that at least ties everything together
Oh yeah, that's uh, that's good. I like that. just do that I was gonna do that purple but I think we'll leave the actual fur to being brown um, we'll do something different with the saddle that'll be orange yeah that looks all right we're doing here is what's called batch painting where you have a lot of the same or similar models and you do one color at a time which is not what I was planning on doing but I got this far on this guy and decided that it was a lot easier just to do a heap of batch painting than um one like one model at a time so even though it's a little tedious in the end once we start getting more details on they're gonna look really good This is one of those models that sometimes I wish I, I had painted in sections as as I was putting it together. It's getting into some of these little nooks and crannies to to put a bit of paint on is crazy, and especially when going to do the detailed parts later on. But not like we can pick it all apart now, so. grab my orcs from downstairs the Blood Bowl team one so you can kind of see what they'll end up looking like um, but they're they're a big batch paint job I think there's like 12 or 14 models which isn't much considering that's like a small or a large like tactical marines like group for 40k but still a lot of models that you've got to paint up. They'll be a good guide as to like what these will actually look like when they're done. Do I have any photos? I could probably just bring some photos up.
I won't spend too long. I'll just quickly have a look. Here. Just go down. Looks like it's just the squad. But this will be the best sort of like representation of what they'll actually look like. So that's then there. So that'll be that'll be cool. Very sort of like very gritty, very dirty. Like, they look like they've actually played football, and not, like, super clean. Whereas the team based on the English actors will be very clean. So we have Sean Bean. I started... Henry Cavill. <laughs> We've got... Simon Pegg. And so on and so forth. Bit of purple and pants. Alright, let's do this guy because he's tiny. So theoretically, there shouldn't be much. <laughs>
so I will have to give this guy away as part of the collection. But part of me wants to keep him. Because he's so cool. Tiny rocket. <laughs> Little guy. Another thing I need to do as well is no is like notification sounds, but then I've not been wearing my headset, so probably wouldn't hear them anyway. <laughs> it's probably checking things like chat and um, follows and stuff like that. Way too much. big problem with the ones that have their spears like on the side. Getting in to do any kind of detail here is almost impossible. As soon as I have to bring like the model off off camera to like actually get anywhere. Otherwise it's too far away for me to see what the I'm doing so Apologies, give me a moment. I'll bring the model back on camera. But I need to see what I'm doing. Alright, let's do this little fella. Get my eyeball in that light. <laughs> Short, that's good for me. It's probably one of the first things I'll pick up is a proper. So they call them. Well, I think it was just a painting light, but it has like this yellow, and then like pure white, and then like what's called blue or daylight which emulates as like as close as possible like the sun well like 
of the sun itself, but like the natural light that you would get on like the least like overcast day. So it's quite nice and gives you like those true colours. Lucky for me, these are all at the moment just colours that are coming out of a pot. But if I was mixing, um, having a white or a blue light would be a lot, a lot better. Just so I could see what I was making. to look at the underside of the uh, of the miniature while I get into these finicky angles. Big boy, we'll pop these guys up here. So we can bring this guy in. First and foremost, let's get this crest done. So we were gonna go with blue, but I think the purple ties everything together a little bit better. Seeing as we're already doing the pants that colour as well. supposed to get paint in here. I appreciate the dynamic models but sometimes you're just taking the piss on actually trying to paint them without painting them in parts.
Hey, Zach, how are you? Yeah, it's not too bad. We've got most of our... We're slowly getting through like the base colors for the other guys as well. So, yeah, it's coming along, right? Just like picking out the parts that are going to be either yellow or like metal color uh, has been difficult. And I really need to go into trying to work out if there'd be a store close by. I don't think I could do it during lunch. But I really need to go, one, check the rest of my paints and make sure that I don't have a spare. Um, but get another one of the Serinox hide. Because this one's just like drying up. And it's such a good base coat for anything brown. Um, but having said that, quite enjoying the purple going on on the clothes. Very similar, pretty much exactly the same as that My Blood Ball team. What have you, uh, what have you got on this afternoon, or this evening? Doing some painting, doing some drawing, looking at my iPad, trying to, uh, trying not to remember that I've got, uh, that bow to do before Inktober, which starts in, what, Friday? Yeah, Inktober starts Friday. I haven't even thought about that either. <laughs> so, yay. Plenty of time. I want that bow done before Inktober though. Alright. Alright, alright, alright. I'm just looking at the paints I've got here. Because I want an underbelly belly colour. And I want it to be blue. too bright. It might be good for like the super last highlight. And I kind of like this as well. Let's open that up. So this is a new colour. Really like yeah, for like the... So for like the undercarriage. Oops. The un like the undercarriage, like the lower jaw, and then probably like I don't know, like up to here maybe. Just so there's some variety. It's not all just like because of the yellows in there as well. It's not all like yellow and orange. So um, yeah. Just trying to. Looking at some colours, just seeing what we've got. A purple. God damn it. Probably could have used that to start. Oh. 
Ooh, dark mindset. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll start with this. I th I've got a, I've got a darker. It's actually more grey. I don't know where I put it. I don't think it's up here. So I think we'll start with this. Which has like a bit of a blue tint to it. If I mix it up. a test on one of these guys because at least then it's not on our main guy so let's go you up there get one of this just like up to the ridge of the nose on the face and then we'll uh, we'll go from there not too even either so like maybe a little bit so that like come out a bit further oh, remember that I have to paint on the camera the mouth as well. It doesn't matter if we dry brush that. Because that'll all be messy anyway. And then... Boom to... I don't know, maybe like... Start at the back of the tail. And we'll go like this. Maybe the tail a little higher. the length it's already starting to like make a difference like if we no, that's not a good one he has a robot leg and this guy's missing oh, whatever see it's already sort of like oh god this camera angle there you go it's already making uh, like a huge difference, I think. Giving some variety to the model.
That's great because you can kind of just like dab at the like quote unquote like line that you're aiming for and it'll just give it like that randomness that it's not like a big straight line that goes down like exactly 50 50 of like the underbelly and the top side so had another look at that um, Halloween-y, I, I call it the Halloween Blood Bowl team because it's basically every theme of Halloween in in one team. I'm really, really tempted to get it, <laughs> which will be my fifth team and I haven't even finished painting one. <laughs> It's cool. Um, it probably be because I'd probably paint it on stream if I did buy it before Halloween. Paint it up. It probably be the only thing that I won't give away. Because obviously I'll actually play them. But we'll see. Uh, could be like a good incentive to get some people into the into the hobby so I'll verse you with them anyway and if they suck then I'll give them away. <laughs> Explain. Maybe. 
guess how this colour will work. Every time we highlight this, we'll highlight that. So on the bus, we've already highlighted it one lot of orange. So brown as the base, squeak orange as the first dry brush, which we'll go over again on this so that it's a bit more prominent. Uh, which is this one literally squig orange which means we'll need to highlight the blue and we'll go or the grey we'll go into Stegadon scale green which is it is a green but it'll serve as our next blue colour so it'll be those two which means then our orange will need a highlight. Sorry, that would be there. Our base was Rhinox. And our final will be Thousand Suns Blue. That can go away. And our highlight will probably be Wild Rider Red because it's not as bright as the other oranges and trust me there are some bright oranges like this <laughs> uh, way too bright but that'll be our final highlight so that'll be our skin tones there in theory so we'll see how that works but I'm very proud at how this has worked. It is giving us um, the contrast we are looking for for both having too much of like a yellow and orange situation going on for the majority of the model. And it's kind of separating, we'll separate the ground as well because we're going to go for quite a bright desert ground to think like Grand Canyon style ground once I get the, the, the rocks I want for that. Um, so we'll have bright grounds, uh, blue under section, bright top section, and then our green hitting the, the top. It should be nice, nice kind of layer um, to the to the colours, and it's really only what blue, orange, green. You, you could count the purple, but they're basically our three colours, and it'll literally just be different layers of, of that with different shades. So hopefully that works. If not. It, it'll have to work. <laughs> we'll have to find something else to, to do if that doesn't work. But let's wash that. No going back. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much locked it in. So if it sucks, it sucks. But hopefully, you know, I've been doing this for long enough that uh, I have some intuition as to whether it'll work or not. So, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully it looks good. <sighs> I 
Alright, let's... I kind of just want to do, get one of the squeaks, like, fully done. Which is a mistake, because I know that it's going to get painted over. Like, by mistake. Like, little bits here and there. But I think out of all of them, this guy will be fine. Because we've got the spear up here, so that's not getting in the way of the body. And we've got, we've got like minimal um, intrusion, probably that, probably being the most intrusive thing there. So it should be fine. So I'm going to do it. Because that'll probably be the next half hour to get that done. And then that'll be our two hours. So, let's get one done. Give my paint a shake. It's very peach color, the squig orange, actually. As I mentioned before, this is a dry brush. We basically have no paint on the brush itself, so that when we move it across, it's only hitting the top side of our model. It's a good technique, even if it's not clean. It's a good technique to see where light might be hitting your model and where the recesses of your model are. The problem is when you're doing two tones, so our blue and orange, you've got to be very careful not to overlap. And in some ways, you just kind of want to leave the lowest levels, in this case the brown, on those edges where you're getting too close to the, uh, to the, you know, second colour, so in this case the blue. one of those techniques I think people like don't like doing when they get started because they feel like they're wasting so much paint on the um, like, you know towel or whatever they're using to dry off excess paint it is so handy
brush might be too big. Particles of orange on the on the blue. So I'll just dry the brush off and just try and get rid of them. So there's our first orange highlight. Now we do the uh, blue side. We're going to stick it on scale green, which to me that looks blue. I mean, actually on camera it looks green, but in this light it looks blue. And that might be one of the things that like having a, a day a daylight might help with. Because obviously this is a yellow light, so it's adding yellow into the to the colour. Look at that, that's so cool. So just a reminder, if we had just gone with the orange, we would have something like this. It's alright. But that's so much better. We're going one more level up. 
So we've got our, high, our super highlight orange and super highlight blue. Although I'm very tempted just to go like that. <laughs> I think that might be too much. But then this might not be different enough. And then let me just again the camera's not gonna be great at picking up the colour. Let's see if I can get it. This is probably it's probably as close as I can get to the actual colour. Or that. I kind of like that. We do have like a mid spot, which is this guy. Troll Slayer Orange. Actually, the Troll Slayer Orange is probably better. Because this is way too red. So I can go away. And that's too bright. light as possible. Wait, so you're saying go like this? Go like the fire dragon orange? Or go with the troll slayer orange? Troll slayer, yeah. That's way too. This one is too bright. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We could go. We could go this yellow, <laughs> which is almost white on the camera. That might be too much. Now, so what we'll do with this is we'll use the Troll Slayer orange. Oh, I didn't check this one. Troll Slayer Orange is going to give us our shading. So what I mean by that is it's going to sit just on the top of anywhere that light would hit. Shelf reflect. Howdy, how are you? How has your day been? I am playing around with some color. Going from what I thought was going to be okay, just a plain orange squid guy, to adding some color variety. I think has gone remarkably well to be honest.
Oh, sorry about that. And let me just see if I can drop the music down a little bit. Um, Hopefully that's better. I might just... This is going to make some noise, but I'm just going to move the mic a bit closer as well. Oops. Hopefully that's a bit better. As I was explaining before, just playing around with some colours to um, to give some contrast to the mounts for the uh, Squeak Hog Riders. I think that's pretty much it. I'm we'll just do the shoulder here. done our three layers of orange we'll need to do our third layer of blue some of this music is getting louder let's see if I can find something a bit quieter this is all a, a bit of an experiment with this music um, so. Hopefully that's a bit better. Alright. We've got our final blue. It's very, very bright. But in moderation. It's gonna make this look awesome. So again, same theory, but instead of so still hitting where the light hits the the top of the uh, of the blue, so a lot of the under section not gonna have the the blue, but we've got like the leg sticking out here. We've obviously got like the top lip and some of the bottom as well, and then probably like just a little bit on the on the tail before it goes under under the body so let's make sure we're on camera here so we'll do the obvious bit
that's a delay. We'll do a little bit more in the town. Just really want it that to be quite thin. of the highlight. And it was quite messy, so we've got like a bit of orange on, <laughs> well, pretty much everywhere. Like the purple got a bit of orange on it. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably paint the, for next time, just paint the squeaks themselves. And then um, we'll uh, we can paint the rest because hopefully the rest doesn't get um, mucked up by the the details of the squig itself. So, but uh, yeah, that I'm definitely liking that. Again, I think my camera's a little more saturated than it actually looks, but um, it's not too bad. So, let's close that up. Just to recap for today, we've got a lot of undercoating done on most of the other models. Found out that the squig's going to look something a bit like this. And I think we'll actually finish that with the, um, the rest of them as well, just because it's a bit messy. So I think that'll be next, that'll be Wednesday. Uh, and then we'll shoot, be in a good spot to kind of like finish off our undercoating and then we can start doing some more details on the orcs themselves, so I'm very much liking the uh, the colour choice then. Again, just something different than what you'd, uh, what you'd expect really, and a lot different than the box, which I don't have on hand. Oh yes I do. So I'll use my main camera for this because it's a big box. So that's the colours that they go with. Actually, I might be able to get a bit of it on here. 
So they're kind of two-tone as well. They've got like the um, the orange and then the cream, which is very natural. Um, but I think the blue is just something, just something different, something that um, you wouldn't really expect. And then they're the orcs are quite, um, quite bright, and they've got white armor. And one, I really don't like painting white, and these guys are going to be a pain to get through, because they're mainly white. Um, so, yeah, don't always have to follow the box. Um, but if you are new to painting, I definitely recommend using it as a, as a guide, because they've obviously got you know color theory down as well so they'll have a good understanding of like what's gonna work and what's not so if you're struggling with that kind of stuff use the box and then you can start experimenting with colors yourself as you get more um, uh, more confident with color and contrasts and stuff like that um, but I'm pretty much just rounding rounding out to the the two hours like probably pretty much done um for today um yeah just so that i have uh some time to wind down before bed but i do appreciate everyone that's stuck around for today we've had a little bit of a conversation going which is which is good um a few more followers which is fantastic and uh yeah hopefully we can hit that uh that 50 goal soon so that we can start giving away some models but anyway hopefully you've had a good monday and everyone's favorite day of the week and i will catch you all if you're around on wednesday same time 7 30. all right thank you very much